Craigslist was the online marketplace of my generation. A bland, bare-bones website that for all of its weirdness actually worked pretty darn well. But in just a matter of years, Facebook Marketplace has completely dominated the used exchange scene, becoming the place to go whether you're into vintage Atari games or obscure metalhead merch. Marketplace is the only reason why many people are still using Facebook, and there is a very good reason for that. Guys, the light, it wasn't plugged into the wall. Ah, uh, there we go. Now it's perfect. Oh, Jesus, now I knocked my mic off. Hey there, it's Levi from my grandma's sitting room, as you can probably tell. Here to let you know that we have launched a Patreon. Now, if that is not at all your interest, please do not feel bad. There's no hard feelings here. Just head right on down to this timestamp and you'll be back into our regularly scheduled content. However, if you're feeling it, you maybe you're just even a little curious, I, I encourage you to listen because we got some stuff cooking up. So we are launching a Patreon page because as it turns out, when you create content criticizing and critiquing brands on their ethical and sustainability standards, a lot of brands and companies don't want to sponsor your content. Now, that actually in some ways is sort of like a good sign because that means that what we're doing is true and you know often pretty challenging to the status quo. And, and that's great because that's kind of what we wanted to do. But it does mean that it makes running a business harder. So because we aren't as ad friendly on this channel, we are forced in some ways to reach out to you, our audience, who are really the people who have supported this channel from the beginning indirectly through YouTube AdSense. Now beyond just like a financial thing, I, I think that these kinds of communities really do help make the content better, especially for a channel like this, where we are exploring subject matter that is beneficial to our audience. We aren't just here for entertainment, we're here to provide knowledge for you, to help you make purchasing decisions. And what makes our content better is if we know what you want to have information on. So this Patreon page is not just going to be a place where there's cool nifty perks, but also a place where you get to communicate more directly with us. But on the perk side of things, we do have a couple of nifty little things going on. Right now, if you go over there, we have our first iteration of a newsletter letter, which we are going to be trialing out, just a place where we can give you some behind the scenes sort of updates, as well as some other headline worthy stories that we weren't able to fit into videos on the main channel. We are also going to be giving you early access to all of our videos and two videos over on our second channel, Future Proof Health. Now the rest of it, I don't wanna to get too kind of specific on because the reality is this should be a space for you. We want you to sort of guide and dictate what this space offers up. So maybe that's like Q and A's, maybe that's, uh, you know, early access to scripts, or maybe you wanna learn how we create our videos. I don't know, but that's sort of the point is that this is a space for everybody. And if you made it this far through the ad, thank you so much for listening. If you are interested, the link will be down in the description. Let's get back to the video. Now, yes, before you get after me, we've seen a lot of your comments about how our content sometimes seems a little pessimistic. And so we're making a positive video here about one of the most powerful companies on earth. I'm sitting here smoking these meats. Jokes aside though, we hear you and we are trying to incorporate more positive stuff into our videos. We like to think that we are presenting a balanced approach to every story that we have, but sadly, the world is filled with more bad actors than good ones. Now this may seem a little weird to us in 2023, knowing what we know about the massive success of Facebook Marketplace, but Facebook didn't actually want to get into the exchange scene for the longest time. Because it turns out, online marketplaces aren't exactly the easiest things to do. You have to balance both the needs of the buyers and the sellers. You have to find ways to make sure that both parties feel safe. I gave you play money so I can play music. Yeah, just give my headphones back, bro. Shut up. Yo! While also maintaining some level of legal integrity, it's really not a good look when your exchange becomes a black market hotspot for sex, guns, 
and baby hedgehogs, which is actually exactly what happened when it first launched. But on top of the baby hedgehogs, you have to make sure that people are actually using the service. If there's not enough sellers, the buyers will leave in droves and vice versa. Not the easiest thing to do when there are already very well-established players in the game like Craigslist. Now, Facebook has had some unique concerns as well. They had actually tried and failed spectacularly at commerce endeavors in the past. Does anybody remember Wishlist or Beacon Oodle? I don't either. And that's probably because they sucked. But despite the Zuck's hesitancy to the online marketplace world, people were still using Facebook as a marketplace without any prompting from the executives. Buy and sell groups kept popping up on Facebook centered around certain themes like parents getting rid of mounds of outgrown clothing or car enthusiasts looking for the next vintage buy and so on. I own every kind of classic car. What's that? Uh, classic cars. I own every kind of a classic car because I'm rich, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's rich. Now, these groups were helpful for a lot of people, but limited in their scope. And eventually, Facebook realized that they had the potential to make the online exchange experience much better for everyone. Now, for all their history of lawsuits, failed ideas, and lizard-like overlord, you have to admit that Facebook was in a pretty great position to make Marketplace work. They're the most used social media platform in the world, and they're one of the richest companies, like, ever. Now, they had the people. They had the money, but perhaps most importantly, Facebook had something that no other company could match. And that was their emphasis on transparency. Now, I don't need to tell you that we as a generation have a strange tendency to post way too much information on social media, but in the case of buying and selling stuff online with strangers, it has some advantages. See, one of the sketchiest things about, say, Craigslist is that you really have no idea who you're dealing with. I mean, this is the place where people hire legit hitmen like to assassinate people, and it's also the place where I bought my first car. That's where I got my Corolla, and I still feel connected to that weird little website as a result. But despite my feelings, it's not exactly a shining beacon of internet safety. And yes, of course, you can fake your identity on Facebook, but there is something comforting about seeing a full name and profile picture and knowing that the stranger that you're handing your address to has been on Facebook for however many years without being permabanned. Now this makes Facebook particularly desirable when it comes to high stakes items like cars or roommates. And they were roommates. God, they were roommates. These are situations where you really don't want to get ripped off or stuck with somebody who turns out to be a little bit more on the Hannibal Lecter side of things or people who don't know which way you're supposed to put the toilet paper roll on the stick. We like beards in this household, not mullets. That's a reference, the paper, the toilet paper comes down the front, it looks like a beard, it comes off the back, it looks like a mullet, but that doesn't work because then you pull it and, it, and, and you're like, you gotta reach around the back to rip it. Now, needless to say, Marketplace succeeded spectacularly. I mean, after they fixed the whole thing with the, you know, hedgehogs and the sex and whatnot. Today, they are the world's second largest marketplace after Amazon. And they accomplished this in a few short years after their 2016 launch, which is honestly pretty impressive. I mean, I know they're Facebook, but think about who they're competing against. Established giants like Alibaba, eBay, Kijiji, and my little favorite, Craigslist. Now I have to say that we at Future Proof here are mostly here for it. It's no secret how much we love the idea of thrifting. Reusing items instead of chucking them away is one of the best things that we can do to make consumer products sustainable again. We should definitely sell merch with a hat on that. Now, yes, I will agree. It sucks that it took a mega corporation to accomplish this, but the reality is Marketplace has done a ton to make used goods more appealing and accessible to everybody. On a massive scale, people are learning that used products can not only save you money, but are often better quality than what you could afford new. And it's never been easier to find these gems. One of the worst parts of thrifting is how much effort it takes. Some people love digging around in a junk shop all day, but being able to keyword search and scroll is what the internet was made for. Need a tricycle to complete your Billy Halloween costume? You wanna play a little game? <laughs> Boom, search that shit up, you'll find like a hundred of them. Meanwhile, to make space for all of these new marvels, it's as simple as snapping a photo on your phone, typing in a few keywords, 
and it's up online for sale. And unlike other reselling apps online, there's no fees. No extra middlemen to pay off means more dollars in your pocket instead of going to PayPal, Visa, and Depop, whoever the heck else you're talking about. And the great thing about doing this instead of donating directly to say a thrift store is that you actually know that the item is going to somebody who wants it. Only about 10 to 20% of clothing items donated to Canadian thrift stores actually get sold in the store. Much of the rest gets hauled off to developing countries where it's basically sitting in a landfill. Now there is a lot of other problems about thrift stores, which we got into in a whole other video that we released like a million years ago now. But Marketplace may just be the best tool we currently have available to connect the right buyers with the right sellers. This reassures you that your old weird Twilight shirt isn't just gonna end up as trash in somebody else's country. God forbid Jacob's likeness isn't fully appreciated. Now at this point, it's been pretty sunshiny, right? We're enjoying ourselves. Facebook is suddenly like, not the worst company in the world. We're loving it, we're digging it. So in this moment, savor that moment, subscribe to the channel. Here's your three second dance break to do it. All right, so as with all things that you see on this channel, we gotta ask the question, why is Facebook creating such a vibrant and useful online marketplace? Is it out of the goodness of their heart? Is it because they love the planet or both? Facebook is free because they're making billions upon billions using your personal information to help corporations sell you things that you don't need. I personally haven't been on Facebook for any good reason other than marketplace in years. But when I do, it's to see if there's, you know, some nice little little friggin' motorhome or something for sale that I'm definitely not qualified to restore and live in, like some sort of crazy nomad living on the road, you know, with his wife in Mexico. But Facebook Marketplace is like the $7 rotisserie chicken that you can get at the grocery store. It's a reason for you to go, and then while you're there, you just end up picking up something else on your way out. Now see, even if you stay in the Marketplace tab, you're still getting fed advertisements, and you might notice yourself on there looking for stuff that you never set out to look for in the first place. The Facebook algorithm learns about your interests and then starts showing you little treasures you never even knew you needed. And say, even when everything goes smoothly, there's still this concern about gentrification. Now we've talked about this in more detail in our Depop video, but basically we're seeing a trend online where people are taking thrifted items and they're refurnishing them and making a whole business out of it. You know, the people on TikTok who find some old dresser for like 20 bucks and then they like sand it and like paint it some funky color and they flip it for $250, yeah. This is all made possible because of Facebook Marketplace. And instead of the thrift store getting that money and donating it to whatever nonprofit they're a part of, this random dude does. Now I'm not going to pretend to know where the line is here. It is still true that keeping whatever you already have is the most sustainable option, and finding things that are secondhand is the most sustainable thing after that. But you can still overpurchase even with used items on Facebook Marketplace, and this online platform has definitely fed into this a little bit. We have a serious problem when retail becomes therapy. We place so much of our happiness and self-worth into accruing shit that it becomes an actual burden. The more materialistic we are, the more miserable we are. I mean, that's probably one of the most intuitively understood things nowadays, but hey, time also says it, so it's gotta be true. With so many dirt cheap deals on Marketplace, it can be tempting to just load up on as much stuff as we can can fit in our garage, but that's not gonna make us happy. Which gets me to my last point about why we should be careful with Marketplace. Because it's run by this fucking guy. You're human, and, and I was human. I am human, still. It is no secret that Facebook is one of the worst things to ever happen to society. Maybe I'm being a little bit hyperbolic there, but everyone knows that Facebook is terrible for your mental health, your productivity, your privacy, and overall quality of life. All you need to do is watch the Social Dilemma if you want a glimpse at what it's doing to our political discourse. So if you want to avoid Meta's all-seeing eye, you can just go to those other websites like Craigslist and eBay and local buy sell groups like there was one back at home where I was living in Victoria called used Victoria and they had great stuff on there too hey even go and do like a clothing swap or like a garage sale for fun with your friends that seems crazy but hey if you like this video and you want to see more content from our channel make sure that you're subscribed and we'll see you next week for another video
Thank you.